the biggest question in Eswatini in the beginning of 2022 is right here with us. Is the country actually going to have the national dialogue at the Royal Crawl? Well, the government says yes, that is exactly what's going to happen. But the political parties on the other hand are saying, hell no, we are having none of that. Now, you might wonder what brought that about, like what brought this difference in opinion, because it's really wide and there's a, there's a wedge that's been driven between the, the government and the people. Now, before we get there, we might have to like take it back to the beginning. Well, behind me, I have the sustainable goals. Um, number 16, sustainable development goals by the UN. Number 16 is peace, justice, and strong institutions. So this video today is proudly powered by SDG number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions peace now um you know it's your boy prof real name Kinemi Alon Tuli no gimmicks here to give you the best of a Swatini what's been happening and what's happening now and what's about to happen in the near future now if you're new to the channel please just do justice to the subscribe button just smash that and you know there's a like button right next to the subscribe button around there you might want to hit that one as well and if you're already part of the family welcome back now let me not waste any of your time let's just go straight into it now if you've been around Eswatini or if you've been following what's been happening around Eswatini you know 2021 was lit that's where the most was happening it all started like around uh, May when uh, there was the Justice for Tabani campaign when cops allegedly brutalized and actually like murdered one of the students own uh, Tabani Komonye and then the, 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 the students then took to the streets to actually march and protest against the police uh, for actually like committing that act of violence against uh, one of their own. So that is exactly what got the ball rolling. And there were the petition deliveries and, and, and the requesting of an elected prime minister. From there on, on 16 July, I remember that because it was my birthday, uh, there was a Sibaya that was held then and then that was when the country was given a new prime minister. Well, people got mad. They were like, no, we actually want an elected one. From there on, there was the incarceration of the members of parliament and drama after drama. And then the most unfortunate event was when a lot of lives were lost at the hands of armed forces during the unrest uh, from 28 June, 29 June. Well, 28 June, they were just shooting with rubber bullets, but 29 June, they actually like shot people with life bullets. That's, what, that's when the most happened. A lot of lives were lost, a lot of people were injured, and well, that's when now there were a lot of buildings burning, protests everywhere from Shangana all the way, all the way to Mbabane and Matapa was in flames. Uh, there's videos of that. I'm not gonna go all uh, deep into that because uh, there's a lot of videos on the channel. You can, you, you can actually just browse through and check. So that's basically what was happening. There was unrest and a, a huge clash between the citizens and the government. And a lot of grievous, grievances, uh, the citizens were disgruntled. They sent their petitions, they asked for whatever they were looking for. Heading the list was uh, good governance and, and leadership. So what followed that basically was SADAC, SADAC being the Southern African Development Community, taking an interest into that. It was basically led by Botswana and the Troika Division, Troika Ogan, which is the, the peace uh, maintaining organ of, of SADC was led by Botswana back then. So they came, they sent a commission, they, they commissioned people. There was an inquiry that was trying to understand what was happening around the country. 
So they sat with uh, members of the public, and the public weren't wasn't really like um, too pleased about that because they felt like they weren't really well represented. And then they also uh, sat with uh, uh, government officials who then related their story. And then the, the MPs before they were incarcerated, that, that's MP uh, Bakrede, MP Gazela, and MP um, Tandemi. They were part of, of, of those that, that actually got warrants later, but those were the ones that were advocating the most for, for changing in, in, in government. So all of that was happening in 2021, but that inquiry by Botswana um, failed because it couldn't stop uh, the violence, it couldn't stop the protests, it couldn't bring uh, the citizens and the government to sit down and actually discuss the issues, what was bothering uh, the people and what adjustments needed to be made by, 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 by the government to actually accommodate uh, the citizens. Now that led to the second uh, shootout, which was around Mbabani in October, where more people died. And that is when uh, South Africa intervened. The leadership of, 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 of the Troika organ of SADAC was now shifted to South Africa, headed by President Cyril Ramaphosa. He then commissioned Jeff Hadebe to come through and try to intervene, bring the people and the government of Eswatini together. So when he got to Eswatini here in the country, he actually like what uh, established um, that there should be a sit down where the parties get to talk it out and uh, find a way to work their problems and find a way forward. Now, government issued a statement uh, from the throne. They told the nation that there would be a national dialogue, but it was only going to come after the Inkwala ceremony. Now, the Inkwala ceremony is basically the first fruit ceremony which is held end of year every year around Eswatini when there's a king um, basically like back in the day when when it was still Queen Labotsibeni and no came around there, there was no Ingwala ceremony the Ingwala ceremony can only be held when uh, there's a king around and if there's a king then he is bound to hold that ceremony as per tradition, as per culture. So uh, government issued the statement that there would be a, a dialogue between the disgruntled public and government after the Inguala ceremony. Now that was meant to happen but there were very dis there were a lot of like dissenting um, voices um, and very disgruntled uh, voices coming from the political parties. They were saying no, there's no way we're actually going to have that happen because of a number of issues. Now, government uh, put that put it forward that the the Sibaya was going to have now. Sibaya is basically. Um, part of the, it's in the constitution, it's when the government, the king gathers people around for basically um, an annual general meeting. So in the constitution there's a provision saying that we can have uh, Sibaya. Now just to like uh, bring up to speed um, concerning what Sibaya is, like the, the meeting at the Royal Crawl. It's in the constituent of, of uh, Swatini that section 232, section 232, uh, subsection 1, Sibaya, 
the Swazi National Council. 232 subsection 1. The people through Sibaya constitute the highest policy and advisory council Libanda of the nation. Two, the Sibaya is the Swazi National Council constituted, constituted by Banhoben Hosi, the Dikulu of the realm, and all adult citizens gathered at the official residence of the Ndrofugazi under the chairmanship of Ngwenyama, who may delegate this function to any official. Three, Sibaya functions as the annual general meeting of the nation but may be convened at any time to present the views of the nation on pressing and controversial national issues. Uh, in Siswati, it goes, Sivene kusebendi sa Sibaya siyao balibandla lili seturu le kwelulega nekwa kha imi komwe live. Tu, Sibaya libandla le sive, Sibaya libandla le sive, la kiwe nge banfa bengosi, Tikuru ganye na bobo nge banfu la batala la bange maswati basa ngane eskozo ni lapo kushala kona indrofugazi. Sishalo wa lole libanja yungwe nyama kepage ingambela lomunye umunfu nome masipi sikati kutsi abe msishalo. 3. Sibaya siya usebenda njenge mshala na wesive wa minyala yonke. Kepage Unabito no mani ni mtewe tfula imibu ono ni mivo yesive na kukona inzaba le mtowa le ufanele ikulumi. So basically the government was saying uh, we will have um, Sibaya because it is provided for in the constitution. Now political parties wouldn't have none of that because they had their reservations when, when, when it comes to actually having a da dialogue at the Royal Crown. Well, so Muzi Masuku argued that Sadak has just been sold a dummy by Mswati and his cabinet. I was fortunate to be part of the civil society team that met with President Cyril Ramaphosa's special envoy, Mr. Jeff Raddebe, and his team yesterday at the Royal Villa. The minute Mr. Raddebe, who had met King Mswati the previous night asked us what dynamic does Inkwala have that may impact people's availability. I knew that Mswati had effectively told them to wait with any negotiation process until after the Inkwala. As every Swazi knows, Inkwala is a very long affair starting with the commissioning of Bemandi, the water party, right up until the Ingonyama disperses Emma Bufo after they have finished weeding his fields. It is not unfathomable that we can start in Wala in October and it only finishes in late February or early March. That is five wasted months. When we were responding to his question, Mr. Radebe raised several other, other questions on saying which we responded to. We chose to proceed to address him on the futility of the Sibaya process in case it had been raised by His Majesty and was likely to be raised by the cabinet team that the Troika team were going to meet after us. Whilst Sibaya is indeed recognized in the constitution of Swaziland as being akin to the annual general meeting of the nation and the highest policy and advisory body in the polity of Swaziland, in reality it is far from being this. First of all, Sibaya does not sit annually as would be imputed from the interpretation of section 232 of the constitution. It sits as and when the Ingonyama calls it oftentimes to make the announcements on who will be the next prime minister. This has been highly irregular with the nation at times going for years without a Sibaya sitting. Sibaya is one forum that has no known agenda prior to its sitting save for the speculation that is likely to abound. It also has no proper minute taking or known scientific way of distilling data on how many people submitted on a particular idea as opposed to another with only the fellow who makes the concluding comments having the final word on which thought or idea held sway during deliberations. 
in, pre, in a previous iteration of Sibaya 1, Kado Makanya, who was in the King's Advisory Council, when reading the resolutions of the sitting, distorted everything that was said there to the total amazement of all those who were present. When asked by journalists why he did that, his response was that he was merely politicking. Abedala Ipolti. Sibaya is a highly patriarchal space, patriarchal space with all women who speak there being required to be on their knees when making their submissions and those who are married to have their head their head scarves. Men can't wear their heads or caps even when the sun is blazing hot. No one is allowed to bring and open an umbrella to protect yourself from the sun or rain if it is pouring down heavily. The masters of ceremony are chiefs or people who are Dinvuna in the royal residences. So basically here he's giving out points that go against why Sibaya should be the arena for a national dialogue of, of, of great importance because this is quite a, a period in the history of Eswatini. Like, it's, it's nothing, like, uh, the, nothing like it has been witnessed before. There's been a lot of what, uh, drama happening around, a lot of lives lost, a lot of violence, a lot of people being incarcerated. As we speak, um, uh, two MPs uh, are locked up. That's MP McRae Day and, and MP Ntandeni. While Gazela has been removed as MP and he's still um, uh, away as a fugitive. He's still the warrant is still up is being sought for by uh, the forces police force so basically here it's a matter of like the government supporting its side using the constitution saying that Sibaya should be there because the constitution says Sibaya is one of those platforms that can actually be used and it's actually the highest uh, platform for national dialogue but then again um, the political parties argue that it cannot be the case that Sibaya is the arena for this because we need a neutral ground as a country where someone else other than uh, the head of state uh, will be chair uh, of, 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 of the meeting and the dialogue. So now that's what's happening right now. Uh, the political parties and the government are look ahead and we're still to see what the way forward will be. But then at the moment, all we know is um, it was announced uh, in 2021, towards the end of 2021, that there would be a national dialogue that seeks to bring negotiations between government and uh, the citizens, including the political parties. But what has been agreed on is where that uh, dialogue is going to be held. Um, political parties and the citizens do agree that we all need this dialogue. We all need to sit down and iron out our differences. But what hasn't been really agreed on is the venue. Uh, the government still insists that the venue is going to be uh, Sibaya, the Royal Crawl, but the political parties say no, that's not going to happen. So, at the moment, that's all we have. We are yet to see um, as we go forward with the times of 2022 how things are going to stand. But then, if there's any suggestions, any views, all of that can go into the comments. And if there's something you might want to add, uh, a view that you want, might want to share, then you can drop it in the comment section and express how you feel about um, Sibaya, how you feel about the 
da dialogue, how you feel about Sadak and Troika handling the situation in the Swatini. So that is it for now from me. Um, all I can do is just hand it over to you and actually be on the listening side. Um, thank you for watching up to this point. So it's your boy Prof. Kunimiarunduli, real name, no gimmicks. Peace. Peace.